back to the Cincinnati Sixers cast because we're here to wrap up this one. As we unfortunately had some technical difficulties, we're here to wrap this one up in the Sports Fanatic New Sixers cast. As sometimes technology be technology and is a pain in the butt. And uh, that happens sometimes. So we're going to wrap this one up audio style, the first part's video style. But we were talking about Andrew's great keys, which were pace of play, getting off to a great start, and obviously bench contribution. I really agreed with that. I also was talking about before we uh, lagged out, which was the great play of Tobias Harris in the series and the best defensive play we've ever seen from him in potentially his entire career, but definitely as a sixer. Um, really stepping up in this series with the only, it's not even a knock on him, the only thing I would want him to do more because of how good he's been shooting when he has is shoot it a little bit more, but he is a secondary scorer, so it's about, as my good friend Zach said, kind of knowing your personnel, and he doesn't, and that's not really necessarily what he does, but I would love to see it just because of how good he shot, so that would be one of my keys just for our best offense, I think, would even be if Toby shoots it a little bit more because the way he plays offense, I don't think is going to tire him out that he won't be able to still play great on defense because he has a very good mid-range and all that. It's not like he has to drive to score all his baskets. So um, I would say uh, to use a different key, he would be one of the key players to zone in on as well as obviously James Harden, but we talked about that a lot in the first part, so I don't need to harp on uh, that. I think the uh, secondary key is the continued success. Yes, he had a couple bugaboo games, but he's a second-year pro that's in his first full starting season. Tyrese Maxey continuing to have young success wise beyond his uh, years in the playoffs is key as well, especially with Joe Al out for either the first two or potentially the first three or whatever it becomes. So that would be one of the keys for me. This dude is by far one of the most exciting guys to to watch on the court because, yes, he started to make all these great threes. But the thing I really loved about Maxi, um, before he started really making all the threes that started happening a couple months into the season, he started getting more consistent at that. And then he's been great at it since, um, is his ability to just put his head down and make ridiculous layups. <laughs> like... There's not a lot of guys that have that kind of like how they give it in the 2K rating. And you know what I'm talking about, Andrew, that acrobat finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's basically what Tyrese has. Um, and I just love watching that because he's old school in the sense of hard-nosed driver, but also new school in the sense of now he's learning that step back three, that pull up three. So he kind of has it all go. And I think he has a chance to be a superstar, obviously. And. Uh, we're seeing it kind of develop in front of our eyes. But I also have tempered expectations. Like, I expected him to have off games in the playoffs, so I wasn't one of the people. And I'm sure you weren't either. One of those people that were tripping heavy over that because you got to expect the expected sometimes, which is a young guy to have some off game in the postseason. But overall, I thought he's been great. No, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, everybody's going to have off games. We, like I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, in the first part was, I mean, James Harden had an off game, game five. I mean, that's just the way sports work. I mean, nobody gets, if everyone's, Oh, if that was perfect, I mean, there'd be no nobody complaining. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Just, just the way it goes. Obviously, yeah. if he has four straight bad games, then yeah, maybe it becomes a conversation. But no, I'm not. I don't get tripped up over one or two bad games. Obviously, again, that's why it's a series. Uh, if you lose a game because it's an off day, you got you got three more opportunities to make up for it. So I'm with you. I, I wasn't panicking or anything like that. Obviously, it was a it was a big thing concern, but. We'll be just fine, and Tyrese Max will be fine, and he'll be ready to go here, especially when he game one with Kyle Lowry being out. He gets gets the benefit of going up against the backup. Yeah, I think he's going to honestly, because of what you just said, uh, which led is leading perfectly into my next point, I think he's going to dominate in game one because he had a very good finishing game, and you just perfectly uh, – so somehow the universe intertwined our thought process there, and you perfectly led into that point. Um that I, if Victor Oladipo ends up playing the one, if Gabe, like whoever they end up having to put at the one because of Kyle Lowry being out, I barely even know who the heck Michael Mulder is. I don't know if you know much about him. So if he goes at the one, I don't think he's going to do anything against Maxi. And then Gabe Vincent's obviously pretty good. But like they're not going to stop him defensively, either Victor Oladipo or Vincent, in my opinion, where Kyle Lowry's the defensive whiz. He's not in. So I think Maxi's going to dominate in game one honestly I would I think he's probably gonna end up being our leading scorer similar to what he was 
in game one, uh, oddly enough, in, in the Toronto uh, series, where this game just kind of the stars align perfectly for him to dominate in game one, where that Toronto series is not like everybody going in was like, oh, Max, he's just going to kick butt in game one. We thought he was going to do well, but not necessarily turn into the second coming of Allen Iverson in game one. So that that was fantastic to see. I think he honestly has a chance of one of those sky high performances again in game one because of what you just said. You don't have the they don't have their defensive gem at guard on the court because Kyle Lowry's not going to be in in game one. Unless if all of a sudden he is able to get ruled in game time decision, but the, obviously it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. No, exactly. Uh, no, I'm with you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready, I'm ready for Monday to just be here, and to be honest. <laughs> and it's also a 7.30 start, which is also kind of trolling, because I understand it for TV standards, but like when you're ready for something to start in the playoffs – well, it's just a 7.30 story, like, oh, I have to, and I have a delay. But for me, um, this is also going to be a game since now I do the work for the Reading Royals and I've been on the color commentating with Eric there that we have a game tomorrow because they didn't clinch in Maine. So I've been able to not have the faint of heart watching the Sixers because I've been watching every single game pretty much not live other than two games in the series. So I've got to enjoy every aspect of the games minus game five, which I want to which was not fun to watch. Uh, but the – so, like, I, I don't have that whole heart attack factor of watching the game, yes. so to speak, because I get to watch them after the fact. So that's kind of a a, a, a different cool aspect. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited they're going to be able to get to watch that game. Uh, all these games were minus game five. Uh, a, a joy to watch where uh, there was good effort there, where the only one that obviously I was pissed off at was game five. So and, – and that happens – like you kind of said, teams have off games as well. It's all about the bounce back. Well, game four, I don't think the team played terrible overall. They kind of just couldn't find it to be able to get over the hump, and that's why Toronto was able to pull away. But in game five, obviously, the, the, yeah, that wasn't acceptable in your home barn having that happen. But then you close it uh, in Toronto, so it's all about the bounce back. And they definitely had a good bounce back. But you gave great keys. My keys would be Tobias, continue success, and maybe shoot the rock a bit more. Maxi, I think, is a continued key with how great he's played as a um, youngster. And I would also say uh, Thibel and Green, because Green's been good stepping up as a veteran, but also we want to see Matisse obviously play like the regular season Matisse. And he's a young guy, so I'm not going to try to expect the unexpected from him. But like, like I want to see him at least be what we know he can be. Like you said, he was pretty good in the first two games defensively, but like in game five, he was really obsolete. So you would want to see more of regular Matisse. And I think that's going to be a key if the if and when all the guards of uh, Miami start coming back, especially. So th those two guys are keys for me off of the bench, primarily as the two biggest keys off the bench, because they're going to need to st really D up as much as they do offensively. They're going to have to mainly D up guys defensively once these guards come back in for the Miami Heat. Yeah, no, without question. I, I agree with that. But his three keys were uh, pace of play, uh, getting off to a great start, and, of course, the bench. Mine were about Tyrese Maxey, um, obviously Tobias Harris, who's been having one of the best runs right now, and also on the fact of Danny Green and the combination of Matisse Thibel being killer defensively. Obviously, I think Green's going to be the guy that's more of a component chip in offensively, but on, but first and foremost, killer defensively once these other uh, guards come in. But, Andrew, did you have any other wrap-up uh, keys or points or players to look out for that you think the Sixers – uh, really need basically wrap up points on the Miami Heat roster as well as we wrap up this podcast. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun series. Obviously, Jimmy Butler, we know what he does, know what an animal he is in, in terms of going after all the all the loose balls, um, just like Embiid. I mean, both being being hard nosed players, and, and obviously we're missing Embiid, but they're missing Kyle Lowry. Is that equal? Probably not, but it definitely helps us out. As we mentioned, Max, he's gonna take advantage of them his matchups, and it's gonna come down to. How much can Thibault and Green guard him? And I think it's going to be key. Uh, my final point is, I, I think the Sixers win this series. I, I came into the playoffs, the only true team in a seven-game series um, I was actually like really scared for is the Milwaukee Bucks. And I think we match up extremely well with everyone else, and I think that comes out to play here. I think we match up extremely well with this team. Again, I think James Harden is the best player on the court. 
um, now. And when you get Embiid back, you'll have the two best players on the court. I'm going to take the Sixers in six games, uh, and they're going to advance to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I definitely uh, love to hear that. For me, I hope a, a player that I kind of zone in on because he's had a good first round series for the Miami Heat, um, but obviously he's not one of those like sky high players at this point of his career like he once was earlier. Is uh, in his career is all the depot because he's been shooting good from the floor, but yeah. not the three. And if all of a sudden he starts knocking down threes again, well, that's gonna suck. Uh, so, so he's a guy that's kind of just a player to watch out for, especially in game one because of their other injured guard. Because this, for some reason, the way of Philly sports always seems to have that guy that's been doing good from the floor or not even doing good from the floor. That's just like I'm hitting threes today, ladies and gentlemen, and you're just like. Okay, so uh, Victor Oladipo, because he used to be more consistent at that, not a great three-point shooter ever, but more consistent at it. Um, I, that's somebody that I kind of just pinpoint to maybe be a guy to watch out for in game one, stepping up in the heat factor because of the other injuries uh, they, they have. But my wrap-up point, I honestly think this series, because of the injury of Joel, is probably honestly going to have a chance to go the whole – nine yards, meaning seven games, which would then make it one of the best series in the entire postseason, which I also think six games also makes it one of the best because six or seven, you're going almost the whole gauntlet. But I think this is going to shape up to be one of the best series because both teams are physical. My only worry is the obviously center defense when it comes to all the heat guards being back and Lowry, who's a good driver. Um, Hero's not really much of a driver or dunk sometimes, but uh, you have Lowry. Hero can drive, I guess, if he wants to, but obviously Jimmy Butler's a very big uh, driver of the ball. So like that's the only worry I have when it beats not in, and Victor Oladipo likes driving. So there's different uh, dimensions there, but I still think if MB comes back and we see not – a damaged good versions of Embiid, which he's played through a bad back before and he's played through the thumb and stepped up in game six. I feel like this is one of those guys that can still play like a bat out of hell, even through injury. Then I do think we have a chance to win, but I do think it'll be in seven because of the fact of Joe Embiid not knowing certainty when he's going to be back. And the biggest key for me is my wrap up point is you must win a game. And I know Andrew touched on that in the beginning of the first part. You must win a game in Miami. If you don't do that, then I think we might be screwed. Well, yeah, I agree with that. I will say this. I think it's hypothetical here. If you go down 2-0, I think obviously obviously it's not a deal. Obviously it's scary. I don't think it's out of the question though, for a 2-0 comeback. I really don't. Um, obviously you're missing Embiid. If, if you get him back, game three, you can take both games in Philly. And then you can still get that game six in Philly, and then it would come down to game seven, obviously, like you're saying. So while obviously it's not the ideal scenario, Probably. Obviously, obviously I want to take one. I'm not saying, oh, go out and lose two games. I do think a uh, – as long as you get a beat back, obviously, for game three is what I'm saying. Um, I do think it is a realistic uh, comeback opportunity as well. I don't think that two games kicks you out of the playoffs. Yeah, I definitely appreciate your optimism. When it comes to going down 2-0, I'm definitely not as optimistic as you are. But I, de- it definitely, uh, I definitely appreciate it because I am in other things and other sports more optimistic sometimes. Where with, well, with 2-0 in basketball to a team like the Heat that I feel like, like you said, similar to us, when they are riding their physicality and momentum to the T, it's going to be tough, especially if Joel's not ready until game four. So, yeah, the key would be Joel. Being, I think I like I, I give it like a decent percent chance, but but it's probably not as as high as yours, which gives it probably a pretty good chance. So, like, that's that, that's the only difference there. But we do thank you all for joining this edition of the Sports Fanatic News Sixers Talk as we got to preview the Heat Series on video in the first part. And then because of stupid technology, we did the uh, audio edition on the second part. Uh, you can follow Andrew at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter and me at JJ Boric 26. Have a great safe day, everybody. And let's keep cheering on those Sixers. Let's go Sixers show the Miami Heat who is boss down there in Miami. Peace out, everybody.